also with an over-under of 28 and a half, the Portland Trailblazers, who last year mm. won 33 games. So the target for this year, 39 wins plus six on last year. Um, similar to the Spurs, the main argument for the Trailblazers is their first round draft pick this year, Scoot Henderson. You know, people say, oh, this guy, he might have been the number one pick in most drafts. You know, a lot of people saying that. And similar to the Wemby argument, if he is a generational generational star, if you do believe that, is it possible that he is good immediately? He is very young, but he has gotten really high quality experience over these last two years being in the G League. So maybe, you know, you could argue, is, is he more ready than your average rookie to perform in the NBA? That would kind of be the argument you would want to give if you expect them to be a surprise team. I think yeah. the other argument for the Blazers is that the Dame trade didn't end up being picks plus young players, which I think a lot of us kind of assumed it would be. It ended up being picks plus key rotation players from good playoff teams. You know, Rob Williams, Malcolm Brogdon, DeAndre Ayton. You throw in Anthony Simons, Jeremy Grant. That is five proven NBA players. I mean, mm-hmm. you can. We just talked about the Wizards, and we, you know, oh, they have all these vets. You know, wouldn't you love some of these Wizards vets? You compare <laughs> their vets to the Blazers vets. It is a pretty significant step up in talent. Yeah, just just comparing the two groups. However, their over under is only four games higher than the Wizards. So, yeah. you know, we mentioned the Wizards as a potential team who could have that, you know, OKC CP3 year, where they just kind of aren't expected to do anything and kind of show up out of nowhere. You know, why couldn't that be the Blazers? You know, if they all stay healthy, hover around 500. Is is that possible? Now, the arguments against, even though I just mentioned all those great vets, they are still the third youngest team in the league, average age of 23.7. Because once you get those past those five vets and Matisse Thibel, roster gets very young. Of the 20 Mm -hmm. guys currently listed on the Blazers roster on basketball reference, 12 are either rookies or in their second year. And then you yeah. factor in that two of those vets, two of those five vets that we're excited about, Rob Williams and Brogdon, have significant injury histories. And you start imagining the scenario where this roster becomes very thin, very quick. You yeah. know, if, if Rob Williams and Malcolm Brogdon are missing any significant time, all of a sudden you're putting a lot of minutes into first year or second year players, which, yeah. which ultimately probably is a good thing for the Blazers because they want to see what they have with these young guys. But it would be an argument against them being a surprise team. Yeah. Um, also, another argument. Also, those guys are going to have maladies all year. Like, like Brogdon like, comes likely, yeah. with them, and so does Robert Williams. They probably played more for the Celtics last year because they were playing for a winning team. And yeah, maybe you just wonder if you're the Blazers, will they be motivated to like, push through? Yeah, they're like, hey, and and this happened with the Thunder in their first year when they just basically sent Al Horford home and just said, yeah. hey. You know what? And and it I think it helped like propel like this like second half of his career that he got so much rest. And so you just wonder if like if they're able to find a landing spot for Jeremy Grant before the deadline, they let Malcolm Brogdon just kind of rest if they can't find a landing spot for him. And like, would anybody be surprised if Rob Williams is shelved for 60 games? Like, I don't know that I would be that surprised by that. And then like Anthony Simons hasn't proven himself to be a winner in this league. Shaden Sharp has not either. Scoot Henderson is a rookie. Like those are your main dudes. Uh, uh, DeAndre Ayton is he's going to be dominating. Is it going to be dominating? I don't know. Maybe perhaps uh, kind of going along with what you just said, you know, another argument against the Blazers would be that potential for more trades coming. You know, yeah. if they don't get off to a good start and they start getting offers for guys like Rob Williams or Brogdon or Jeremy Grant, are they really just going to like push forward with this season, turn those down, or are they going to kind of continue to overhaul this roster, get younger, get more assets going forward? Um, mm-hmm. I think that's a pretty good argument against them. And then the last argument I had was, you know, what evidence do we have that Chauncey Billups is a good coach? He's yeah, been this is his third form. year in Portland. You know, to his credit or in his art in his defense, you know, this team, the second half of these last two seasons has been tanking. They've been trying mm-hmm. to maximize their pick. So you can't really judge him that bad. Although you could say they've done a pretty good job tanking. So <laughs> yeah. he's been a pretty good tanking coach. Yo, got to give <laughs> him credit for that. It's been the perfect tanking coach. They've had these like two stealth tanks that have netted them yeah. like very high level prospects. Uh, he, he did his job. Um, but 
when you're choosing a team to win 39 games, yeah. especially after they trade this, you know, generate, I mean, franchise player in Damian Lillard, do you really trust Chauncey Billups enough to, to make that big of a jump with this young team? Yeah. That would be that, an argument against. It's tough. And, and teams usually say like, you know who you are after 20 games. And you look at the the games that the play that the Blazers play right out of the gate. I, I'm I'm seeing maybe one that I would say is like totally totally winnable. And obviously things happen. These if it's a surprise team, they're surprising in that they're beating teams they shouldn't beat. But they play the Pistons, and like every other team is either like a a outside of like Utah and the Pistons are projected to be play in or better. On their schedule, yeah. it is going to be really tough. And if they figure out through twenty games, if they've won like if they've won three, if they're like three and seventeen through twenty games, then you wonder if it's like, hey, Rob, go ahead and have a seat. Um, and then maybe Jeremy Grant, you can find a landing spot for him. There will be a contender that will probably want somebody like him, or like a mid tier team that will want him, or or maybe you send him back to Detroit. There will be options for them. I just wonder if the first half of the schedule is going to be too tough for them. 